So basically, I came across this video called 15 Reasons the Megalodon Shark May Still Exist. And I watched it out of morbid curiosity, just like, hey, I wonder what this video has to say. Obviously, the Megalodon doesn't still exist, but I guess there are some things you could say, you know, in favor of maybe it still exists. Whatever. I guess there are some things you could say. So I was curious how they could come up with 15 reasons, and the first two were horrible. So I stopped the video and I said, I want to react to this on stream in character as a fish biologist because I don't think I'm going to enjoy this. Uh, I'd also like to point out it is made by a channel called Faxopedia, which is probably the single most misleading name you can give your channel. I mean, that's horrible. It's like naming your channel The Cooking Channel and then only playing video games. Like, Faxopedia could not be further from what this actually means. But anyways, we won't prejudge. The, maybe the first two reasons were bad, and there are some other good reasons why the Megalodon is still alive. I'll share at the end what are what is probably the best reason, or like two best reasons. They're not good, by the way. They're very, very bad reasons. But if you have to come up with some reason that the Megalodon, the you know giant prehistoric shark, is still alive, there are a couple that are... I guess passable in more of like a we don't know kind of way. But anyways, let's see what this guy has to say. Let's cut right to the chase. Lots of people want Megalodon to still be out there, but are they? As time goes by, more and more people find evidence that seems to suggest these king-sized sharks might not be as dead as we thought they are. Of course, there's every chance these so-called clues are nothing but hoaxes, and the believers nothing but fools. But let's <laughs> take a look anyway, just in case. Here are the reasons the Megalodon may still exist. Number 15 video evidence. As the old saying goes, okay. seeing is believing. In 2019, sure. a video posted on YouTube came with the hope that everybody would believe what they saw. A giant shark leaping out of the ocean to grab something in its jaws. But there's a catch. While the shark initially looks like a typical great white, there's something different. It's far, far too big to be considered a normal or ordinary great white. <sighs> Here great we go. can ultimately grow up to 20 feet in length. This shark appears to be much, much bigger. Raising the All right. So... First thing we're going to need to talk about when it comes to video evidence of a fucking megalodon, by the way, first thing that we need to talk about is scale. Because you know what's crazy about the ocean? Not a lot of people know this, but the ocean has this one really crazy, you know, factor about it. It's made completely of water and water doesn't have a scale. So you can put something in the ocean and you don't know how big that thing is. You have absolutely nothing to compare it to other than water. And there's no scale to water. If you take a zoomed in picture of a tuna fish, it can look bigger than a shark because it's in water. You have nothing to compare it to. Still, proving a hoax is an incredibly difficult task. And since nobody has been able to disprove the video as of yet, we can conclude that this may very well be Jason Statham's old friend. Because nobody has been able to definitively disprove that the fisheye lensed video is a megalodon, it may very well be a megalodon. And now it's time for the odd topic. This photo from Brazil seems- This is where I had to stop. I, I was watching this video casually and I had to stop. This is- And you know what's crazy? You know what's crazy about this, too? It's literally from a Mythbusters episode. Yeah. It's literally from a Mythbusters episode. It is an episode of Mythbusters where they test how strong the jaw of a Megalodon would be. This guy used this as his number two evidence in why the Megalodon still exists. It is literally in an episode of Mythbusters. Show the surface corpse of a dead shark. That much is clear, but what's ba How is that much clear? You can see wrinkles. You can literally see this glaze of the, sh the sun on the fucking plastic Athlete, balloon the animal. The size of the thing. The shark's body is said to have been found by a marine biologist who was a exploring nearby when he saw it floating in the far thing. Where did you get this story? It's literally from a myth. He's just making things up. 
He's saying a marine biologist found it. It literally is from a... You can watch the episode of Mythbusters and watch them build this. Distance. Quickly as he could, he assembled a team and had the body dragged to the beach. Given the size of it... He's sure just making things up. Done, right? What do you think? Number 14. The coelacanth. It may sound like something from a science fiction... Coelacanth is my favorite fish. And the story of the coelacanth is very cool. But it is not evidence that prehistoric creatures are still on Earth, okay? The megalodon is a surface-dwelling, gigantic shark that is a predator. The coelacanth is a deep-sea in the center of the Indian or South African Ocean that lives in caves. They live in caves at the bottom of the ocean. How would anyone ever find them? That is not the same thing as a giant surface shark. Story, I, but the coelacanth is living proof that extinction is not necessarily the end. It it's, no, it is. Extinction is the end. The coelacanth just didn't go extinct. It just lives deep in the ocean in a place where we wouldn't interact with it much. Long believed that the coelacanth, a small fish that lives far beneath the surface of the ocean, had been extinct for over 65 million years. But in 1938, scientists found a living specimen of the fish off the coast of South Africa, debunking any claim that the coelacanth no longer existed. There were no claims. No one knew shit. No one cared about the coelacanth. We found a fossil, or a couple fossils, in rocks 65 million years or older. And we said, okay, so this fish probably went extinct 65 million years ago. And then we found one. It's not that unlikely. It lives in a deep sea cave. How often do humans go into deep sea caves? Even science gets it wrong sometimes. The rediscovery of this long missing species has led many. Oh, to don't use my favorite that picture. Has befallen That's my favorite fate, picture. Hiding deep below the ocean, far from the eyes of curious humans. But no, scientists. No, it's not hiding deep below the ocean. The megalodon is a surface, coastal, warm water shark. That is literally the exact opposite of everything the megalodon would do. Deep? No, it doesn't want to be deep. It wants to be coastal. Cold water? No, it wants to be warm water. Also, fun fact about the deep ocean, you know what's actually in the deep ocean? When you get down below a certain depth where humans are not? Snailfish. This. Do you think the largest shark to ever live is surviving on fucking glorified fleshy tadpoles at the bottom of the Mariana Trench? No, it is a apex predator. It needs to eat other giant things that aren't down there. Have largely dismissed this theory, noting that the megalodon preferred shallow, warm water and was particularly fond of prowling the coasts. Okay. Claim that it's At least he acknowledges the that. Megalodon to adapt so drastically to a whole new life in the cold depths of the wide open ocean. Okay. But true. While scientists claim that the possibility of the meg survival is less than one percent. The rediscovery of the coelacanth means that there is now a precedent for the rediscovery. Where do you get the number less than 1% from? Less than 1% chance that the Megalodon is still... You know why? You know where he got that number from? You know where he got that number from? He asked, or someone asked a bunch of scientists, D is the Megalodon extinct? And everyone said yes. And they said, well, can you say that for 100% certainty? And of course, there's science and say, well, no, we can't 100% say it, obviously. There's no way to sufficiently prove that something is extinct. And he's like, boom. Less than 1% chance it might still be alive. They didn't say they could 100% prove it. Discovery of species long thought to be extinct. With new technology, scientists are exploring our world in ways previously impossible. And if smaller fish can adapt to a whole new ecosystem, who's to say that the ultimate aquatic predator can't do the same? Me. Me. I am. I say that. Me and every other scientist to ever, ever work with animals would say that. That a large apex predator is significantly less capable of adapting to new environments than small animals are. Not to mention, the coelacanth didn't exa it, it didn't adapt. It's always lived in deep ocean caves. Literally nothing changed. You were implying that the greatest apex predator in the ocean, not the greatest, Mosasaur is better than the Megalodon, adapted to new temperatures, new pressures, new food sources, no sunlight, and your reason for it is, well, the coelacanth has stayed in the same place for a long time, so clearly it's possible. Maybe the megalodon is a vegan now. Actually. No, no, it's not. Nope, 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 no. The megalodon is not a vegan. You cannot sustain a giant shark on plants. Probably not. 
Number okay. 13. The unexplored ocean. Oh, no. Don't. If he says the line, only 15% of our ocean is explored. Who else knows what could be in there? Could be mistaken as a breeding ground for sharks. Don't say it. Planet oh Earth is God. made up of water. Don't say it. Ocean's taken up Don't a say it. Don't say it. Don't say the explored line. All teeming with life. Don't in say every it. every single one of our five oceans, there exist delicate ecosystems filled with fish, algae, sharks, and more. But... Despite the thousands of no. oceanographers, geographers, no. and others who've dedicated no. their lives to exploring these hidden worlds, there's a no. lot more left to discover. No. Only 15% of Earth's oceans have been explored, meaning that I there's knew an it. incredible... I knew it was going there. It always goes there. That's not an argument. I hate this argument so much. Just because only... Okay. First of all, let's define explored. Explored means a human being has swam there or a robot with a camera has gone there okay do you know what the majority of the world's oceans are it is just empty dead space it's just nothingness it's just giant amounts of water why would we ever go there there's nothing there there's no life we can easily tell that with satellites and mapping and imagery we don't need to explore the giant open ocean where there's absolutely nothing. Every day, new species are being observed and old species once believed to be lost are being rediscovered. Yeah, new species like tiny insects and like small fish at the bottom of the Mariana Trench. Not new species like the largest shark to ever exist. But all of this suggests that the Megalodon cat- What does the thermohaline circulation have to do with anything? The hot water does not go deep sea enough to support a fucking megalodon. Without necessarily having he's just putting things on the screen to make it seem like he knows what he's talking about. I don't even think he knows what thermohaline means. Megalodon teeth can grow up to 18 centimeters long. This megalodon just seems like facts about megalodons. The ocean floor than typical shark teeth. But the question remains, how is it that so many teeth are being discovered if the meg is genuinely extinct? <laughs> 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 yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 I'm following. No, you know what? I'm with him on this one. I'm with him on this one. Hundreds of millions of years, there was a very large shark with shitloads of teeth prowling the ocean, and it lost entire sets of them on a near weekly basis. How could there be so many? He's right. It's crazy how many megalodon. You know what? I have a megalodon tooth in my room. How How is it possible? Scientists believe that the reason is logical. Shark's teeth are one of a handful of bones in their entire skeleton. It makes complete sense that such material would remain intact and fossilize over thousands or even yep. millions of years. Yep. Still, it also suggests that there could in theory be a whole new group of megalodons eating well in the depths of the ocean. No, it doesn't. How does it suggest that at all? What is it? You just jumped over. No. There's just, there was nothing about what he... What... <laughs> <laughs> there's lots of teeth therefore there's a surviving modern day megalodon species living in the deep ocean if a shark loses its teeth every two weeks then it must be possible for these teeth to be brand new there could be a very nope it's not possible accident actually because there's this amazing amazing thing that fossils do when they go underground i don't remember if it's oxidization or some some other chemical and they change color Bones and fossils, they're not white. Megalodon teeth that you find are not white because uh, they've like calcified or oxidized or whatever the word for it is. Uh, so you would know if they were new. You would know, and uh, they're not. Such a huge bite could only be the work of a megalodon or a very, very hungry large fish, but probably the meg. For the more. No, not probably the meg. He slips that in. At the end of every one, he gives like barely the tiniest, like the tiniest, dumb, not even real evidence. And at the end, he's like, well, it's probably the megalodon. I mean, it could be something, but it's, pro it's probably the megalodon. Skeptical among us, it's worth noting that megalodons were well known carnivores who regularly feasted on dolphins, whales, and even other the sharks couple that with our so does literally cape. everything whales are floating buffets the cape town sighting despite Ooh, the world being slightly preoccupied it seems that even wars can't stop a visit from the meg on the 18th of december 1942 nazi is he really about to show me a photo from 1942 german soldiers piloting two u-boats in cape town south africa happened to catch a photograph <laughs> 
I got nothing. He's right. That's it. That is the Megalodon. That's it. That is... That's it. Well, sorry guys. Pack it up. I was wrong. This reason is too strong. It may well be the Meg. Documentaries exploring the sighting have interviewed marine biologists who have confirmed that the creature seen in the photo is likely to be the Big Don himself. No, 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 no. Did he just say that they did a documentary and interviewed a marine biologist and marine biologists looked at that photo and you went, yep, Megalodon. Don't claim that marine biologists said that that is likely the Megalodon. They definitely did not. I refuse to believe that any self-respecting marine biologist looked at a black and white photo from the 1940s with absolutely no scale and went, yep, Megalodon. Marine biologists who have confirmed that the creature seen in the photo is likely to be the Big Don himself. But it's also worth noting that these biologists are seemingly untraceable, giving the skeptics some superiority on that one. Did he just... <laughs> Uh, don't worry, guys. I swear the marine biologist said that it's a megalodon, but I can't. Uh, I don't know their names, and I can't get in contact with them, and we can't trace them. Uh, but they're definitely real, and they definitely are real people with degrees. Don't worry about it. Just take my word for it. Mariana Trench, known as the uh, I knew it was gonna. I knew it. I knew it. Anytime there's something like aliens, UFOs. Mm, things we don't know about. It's always the Mariana Trench because it's just so deep we don't know. In the world, the Mariana Trench is the ultimate hiding place for underwater creatures who don't want to be bothered by the human world. No, it's actually not the ultimate hiding place. It's cold, it's extremely high pressure, and there's nothing to eat. It is actually probably one of the worst hiding places you could you could do. It's like if you played hide and seek with your friends and dug up a grave, crawled into the tombstone, and then covered yourself up and be like, yeah, this is this is a great hiding place. I can't breathe. Hidden away in the Pacific Ocean, the farthest known depth in the trench is around 36,000 feet. So deep that Mount Everest could fit completely inside of it without getting close to breaching the surface. Scientists have discovered that there's vibrant life within this depth, as creatures from Xenophire Force to tiny microbial life forms thrive in this unexplored ecosystem. Yeah, I'd like everybody to keep in mind right now that his, his channel's name is Faxopedia, and he continuously puts on like charts and graphs that he's not even talking about, have no relevance to what he's talking about on the screen to make it seem like he knows what he's talking about. He's also multiple times said, marine biologists say, and then immediately after said, well, we don't actually know the name of them and we can't trace the marine biologist who said this. But there is one creature who is as of yet unaccounted. Hey guys, did you know that a Harvard scientist of psychology said that I am the smartest person in the world? Don't ask his name. I can't trace him and I, don't, I can't give you his name, but he said it. He did. For the Megalodon. If the Meg really is hiding deep underwater, having adapted to the whole new climate and depth that comes with it, there would be nowhere better to hide than the Mariana Trench. Yes, there would. Literally anywhere else would be better. I actually can't think of a worse place for a large predatory shark to live in a deep ocean, high pressure, cold, foodless environment. It's actually probably the worst place possible. Tucked far which is away. impressive. Because he was looking for the best place for the shark to hide as a reason, and then gave the worst place possible. From human disruption, with much room to live and thrive, the trench is practically a hideaway for celebrity fish. It's the Hamptons, or the Beverly Hills of the ocean. Yeah, if the Hamptons or the Beverly Hills were in the middle of a desert, had no access to water or food, and you were constantly under pressure and about to explode. We're going to have to look into that one. Number four, oh. Google Earth. More than just a blatant invasion of privacy, Google Earth is a conspiracy theorist toolbox. Google Earth has been used to find Atlantis to try and infiltrate Area 51 and has now even been used to track the Meg and it may well have worked. Somehow, someone browsing on Google Earth discovered a captured aerial image of a shark off the coast of Iraq and the discovery isn't entirely out of the realm of possibility. Bearing in mind that the Google Earth cameras well, show me the fucking very image. The year, any animals that it captures with such clarity must be huge. How often do you see pugs or poodles or hamsters? Exactly. Well, to show see me a the shark image. with such clarity from such a height means that this creature is likely around 70 feet in length. That is a very, very You're very just making shark. up numbers. You literally already said that the shark can sighting. only go to Didn't you say 60 he said he has not only said 60 feet max, he said 32 feet max at one point. Now all of a sudden it's it, 70. It lines up 
and he's still yet to show us the image. With everything we know about the Meg, we know from historical research that Where's the, Meg the image? Loves coastal waters, is a surface dweller, and typically grows to around 60 feet on average. Now it's 60 feet on average? He literally, like, within two minutes ago said 60 feet maximum. And now he's saying 60 feet on average. And now he's admitting that they're coastal fish again, when he had an entire section on the fucking Mariana Trench. Average. Well, this image seems to suggest all of those things. If any skeptics are watching, feel free to explain this one in the comments below. Just did. Get fucked. This may be as close as we get to... Is this the image? This is the image. This is what you're telling me is a megalodon. What? This looks like the Hawaiian Islands. Is that not just Hawaii? Is it not just what Hawaii looks like from Google Earth? I, I'm i trying to see the fish and I don't even see the fish. So. Proof. Or it could be a big shark. Number three, the HMS Challenger. Sure, the HMS Challenger has been out of service since. How the fuck does the, a this is, that's from the 1800s. Where does this come from? The late in? 1800s, but that's also what they say about the Meg. The HMS Challenger was a Royal Navy ship. Yeah, and they're right about both. Yeah, the HMS Challenger hasn't hasn't swam since the 1800s, and the Megalodon hasn't been... <laughs> Typically used for marine expeditions back in the 1800s, and that is precisely where the Meg comes in. In 1875, the HMS Challenger discovered a pair of megalodon teeth while dredging the Tahiti seabed as part of an expedition. Sure. These teeth have been the subject of intense debate, with experts dating them anywhere between 10,000 and 25,000 years old. That, of course, is a very long time, but it doesn't line up with the generally agreed extinction date of the Meg. According to scientists, the megalodon went extinct around one and a half million years ago. So if the Meg, which may I remind you loses teeth every two weeks, is extinct, how exactly did it leave behind a tooth several hundred thousand years after the date it disappeared? I've got a crazy theory. It was the 1800s, and they still were healing people. If you went to the doctor with a cold, they prescribed you cocaine. Okay? So maybe, just maybe, the scientists didn't really know what they were talking about, you know? Maybe. Just a thought. That's what happened to a group of Australian cage divers who witnessed what may just be one of the first undeniable sightings of Megalodon in our modern age. While it has the appearance and the body structure associated with a typical great white, the sheer- Stop there. Stop there. There's an image of a fish in the ocean. It has the typical body appearance and look of a great white. That's where you stop. That's just- Hey, you see this ladybug? It looks like a ladybug, it acts like a ladybug, it has the pattern of a ladybug, and it's a megalodon! The size of the animal has led many to suggest that this creature may just have something special about it. Of course, marine biologists and scientists have, as expected, dismissed the footage as merely as expected. Proof great whites exist in the ocean, something everybody <laughs> knows. But that explanation is pretty weak considering the size of the beast, which is clearly something much larger than a great white if this no it's not this isn't the meg it that's not clearly larger than a great white there's just a normal fish swimming alongside of it i mean the scale makes sense for a great white again what are you comparing it to like this is this is the very first point i made when we started watching this video is you can't come up with size measurements in the open ocean it's just always arbitrary